let's build this miter key jig on the saw stop. It'll make it easy to cut the slots for these miter keys, which can reinforce your joinery and add a decorative touch. For most of this build, I'll be using half inch Russian birch plywood. And I'll start by cutting 14 inches off of the end of my sheet of plywood. So we're starting out with a half inch piece of plywood, 14 inches by 48 inches. Then we're gonna cut 12 inches off the end of that for our bottom piece. After that, we'll cut our two angled bed pieces with a 45 degree beveled cut in between. Then we'll cut a nine inch by nine inch square for the fence and two three inch wide strips, which we'll cut to length later. Then we'll cut four five and a quarter inch squares, which will later become our triangle braces. And the rest will become scraps that we'll save for another project. So we'll move our fence to 12 inches and cut our bottom piece. The next cut will be that 45 degree bevel between the two bed pieces. And because it's a bevel, we'll set our fence to seven and a half for the first one, which will actually make it eight inches wide on the top face. And then flip over our workpiece and make a straight cut at eight inches for the other one. Next, we'll set our fence to nine inches and make two cuts to make a square for our fence. After that, we'll set the fence to three inches and cut one strip from the smaller remaining workpiece. and cut another three inch strip off the end of the larger remaining workpiece. Next, we'll set our fence to five and a quarter inches. And with the remainder of our plywood, we'll cut four squares at five and a quarter by five and a quarter inches. Now we can move the fence out of the way and switch over to the riving knife. We're gonna turn these squares into triangles. Next, we'll set up our miter gauge to a 45 degree angle. We wanna set up our squares so the blade will cut diagonally right down the center. And then we'll set our stop to accurately repeat the cut four times. You'll need a way to securely hold your workpiece through the cut, but keep your fingers away from the blade. I'm using this DIY push stick with rubber on the foot. And this is where the paddle switch comes in handy, so you can shut off the blade before you grab your workpiece. Then rinse and repeat four times to create eight triangle braces. The miter slots in the table saw are about three quarters of an inch wide and approximately seven sixteenths of an inch deep. So I'm gonna use this 3 8 inch plywood to make runners for the bottom of the jig. I'm setting the fence to just over 3 quarters of an inch because I wanna cut them a little bit tight first and then adjust as needed until they're a perfect fit. As you can see, they're a little tight after the first cut. So I'll just make a tiny adjustment on the fence. And because now I'm cutting such narrow strips, I'm using a featherboard for safety and accuracy. It's important that the fit is nice and snug, but they still slide freely. All right, we've got our 12 by 14 bottom piece, our eight by 14 angled bed piece with the bevel cut, and another one just like it. We've got a nine by nine square for the fence, two three inch strips for the fence, and eight triangle braces. Oh yeah, and our three quarter inch runners. We're gonna use a brad nailer to attach the runners to the bottom piece, but make sure the brads aren't too long. For this next step, we need our runners to sit in the miter slot flush with the top of the table, but they're a little bit shallow, so I'm gonna use these popsicle sticks as shims. We're gonna assemble this part of the jig in place on the table saw. So I'm using some masking tape to protect the steel top from any glue squeeze out. 
we'll need a center mark on the long edge of our bottom piece. Then we're going to line up that mark with the center of the blade on the table saw, and then move our fence up against the bottom piece. We'll put some glue down on the runners, and then place our bottom piece up against the fence so we know it's straight. And a few brad nails will secure the runners in place until the glue cures. To assemble the angled beds, start by adding a center line across the bottom piece. Add some glue and then place the beveled edge along your center line. Then add a few brad nails to hold it down, but don't put any nails near the center of the jig where the table saw will cut through later. Now we can start adding our triangle braces with glue and brad nails on each side. I'm using a scrap of wood to get consistent spacing on the middle two braces. And we'll repeat that whole process for the angled bed on the other side. Go ahead and sand down all the edges to knock down any splinters or rough spots, and sand the edges of the runners as well. Adding wax to the runners and bottom will help it slide smoothly on the table saw. With our jig back on the table saw, raise the blade about an inch and a half. And then slowly start cutting through. but make sure you stop before you cut all the way through the jig. I decided it would be nice to add a line that references the center of the cut. That way, when the workpiece is on the jig, I can easily see where the cut will be made. I want a permanent reminder to keep my hands away from the back of the jig and also not to cut all the way through it. So I took that little scrap of wood and spray painted it red, and then I glued it to the back of the jig where I want to avoid cutting all the way through with the blade. Now we need to finish building the fence. I'll start by rounding off three of the corners of our 9x9 square. This is where those three inch strips come in. Place them on the jig like this, and then put a pencil mark where they overhang the jig. Then use those pencil marks to cut them down to length. Now we're gonna use our jig to hold our three fence pieces while we glue and nail them together, but we're not attaching them to the jig. We're only attaching the fence pieces to each other. And again, take the time to sand down any rough edges. Simple spring clamps are enough to hold our fence in position. And with that, our jig is done and ready to make its first cut. In the next video, we'll use this jig to make a simple mitered box. See you later. In the previous video, we built this miter key jig on the saw stop. And today we're going to use it to build a simple mitered box. I pulled a piece of walnut off the shelf, and it's about 25 inches long.
I ended up with a box that was approximately four by six inches and about three inches tall, but all of the dimensions in this project are subjective and you could scale it to whatever size you want. After cutting the walnut sides of my box to length, I set the blade angle to 45 degrees and placed the miter gauge on the other side of the blade to cut my miters. We'll need a dado for the bottom of the box, so I'm lowering the blade down to about a quarter of an inch, and setting the fence to about a quarter of an inch away from the blade as well. We'll need to measure inside those dados to figure out the dimensions for the bottom piece. And then cut the bottom piece to size out of a scrap of eighth inch plywood. And now I can assemble my box. I lay out a piece of clear packing tape with the sticky side up on my workbench, and then place the box sides on the tape. I spread some glue in all the miter joints, and because my bottom piece is plywood, I can also add glue inside the dado. This part is always so satisfying. The packing tape allows you to just roll it into the shape of a box. But I always like to add clamps as well to make sure the joinery is nice and tight. After the glue is dry, we get to peel off the tape. And now we get to actually use our new miter key jig. Place the box on the jig and raise up the blade so that it's below the inside corner. We can use these lines as an indicator to know where the miter key slots will be cut, but make sure we're not cutting where our bottom piece is. Then place the jig fence up against the box and clamp it in place. And we can make our first cut. Turn the box and do the same thing on all four corners. And then flip it over to get evenly spaced keys near the top of the box as well. Off camera, I've prepared this nice piece of bird's eye maple for the lid, and one for the keys, which has a thickness that matches my table saw blade. I want it to fit snugly in the miter key slots. I make some marks so I can cut the keys a little bit oversized. And after cutting out the first one on the bandsaw, I mark out the rest on my workpiece and cut them as well. Now it's time to add the keys. These contrasting maple keys will add strength to the joint as well as some visual interest. I'm not worried about glue squeeze out because the sides of the box will be sanded flat later. I like to cut off the overhanging keys on the bandsaw first.
and then flatten the sides on my oscillating belt sander. I decided it would look nice to round over the sides of my box on my saw stop router table. This is another point in the project where you can really add your own unique variations. I'm going to use this scrap of 4x4 fence post as a large heavy push stick to make rounding over these corners safer. I'm also making very shallow cuts, and then after each pass of the four corners, I raise the router bit just a little bit. With the box mostly in its final shape, we can take some measurements and start cutting the lid to fit. I'm cutting a rabbit into the edges of my lid so it'll stay on my box. So I'm raising the table saw blade to match the thickness of my box sides, and positioning the fence to just remove the thickness of my blade. Now the lid will fit nicely on top of the box. I wanted to add an interesting shape to my box lid, so I set the table saw blade to about 12 degrees. And then using a push stick, I carefully cut along all four sides of the lid to add a slight taper. I'm using my spindle sander again to round over the corners of the lid so they match the shape of the box. I'm going to use my random orbit sander to refine the shape of the lid and sand everything smooth with progressively finer grits of sandpaper. And of course, you gotta add your signature. Use your finish of choice. For me, it's a thin layer of oil-based polyurethane and polishing with wax. I like using leather as a liner for my small boxes. It's easy to cut with a razor blade, and I'll typically just use wood glue to glue it down to the bottom of the box with the soft suede side facing up. You could use these same techniques to build a box of any size, shape, or style. The dimensions, wood choice, colors, and finish are all completely up to you. I hope this was helpful, and I can't wait to see what you build. See you later.